Hello everyone, my name is Shem and welcome to Group X Kitchen. The super resolution I can switch to it, load image, I can get the same cat photo, submit and I got the result instantly. So we already have four videos about creating this framework and I think it's going to take longer to explain every small detail. So I decided to take a shot and just make some progress on my own and later I will show you what I did so far. So I have my laptop with me today, I'm going to use it as a client and I have my workstation here. Uh, the code is all saved on GitHub, so I will show you how we can grab it from GitHub, start installing the back end and start to install the front end side and we'll show you exactly what I have done. So here is my GitHub, I can uh, just copy the URL from here, go to the empty folder and get clone the AI framework. So now that's how it looks like. This is the back end side, this is the front end side. Uh, we need some requirements for Python, so I use Python 3.8 and these are the requirements. You can just easily uh, write down, uh, let's go to vfx AI here and then you can say pip3 install and then our requirements, the text, that's how it looks like. And then it will automatically grab all um, the libraries with its versions and will install to your Python. So um, that's what I have here and I will do exactly the same on my laptop. I will share a screen also for both of them. Um, here is in the back end. We have now uh, the main file. Let me open it with Sublime. So this is the main file. That's the back end. So we have right now only two back end requests. It's actually called grayscale. I have to update this one in the repository and this one's called super resolution. All right. And we have workspace. It's going to be empty. Here is going to do uh, all the temp files and processing stuff. You don't care much about it. And we have here solutions. Okay. And for each solution you copy or you create here, you have to define a file like this. And this file has a function called process, which will get the data from uh, the back end request, process it and respond back with exact the same format. So um, you usually receive a file name. Let's, let's imagine they are sending an image. So you get the file name like cat, the JPEG, and the base64 data in as called data. And it's going to be represented as base64. Uh, so process is going to create the temp folder in the workspace folder and uh, going to do the super resolution thing or make it a grayscale, do whatever machine learning thing. And then the output will be this dictionary, which has file name and data inside it. Okay. And that's the folder of the solution. This is what you download from GitHub. If there is a, like a research lab who already published a paper and it's and it's code, you have to manipulate this code here so you can make it as easy as you're giving a single file input, you get a single file output and then you convert it into page 64 so you can respond back with it. I can make more tutorials about this. Um, but yeah, so if you look into the main function here, it just takes input image and output image. Not, not much. Okay, so um, that's for the back end solutions. Here, um, I wanted to make it as easy as it looks like now. So receive data, that's the data that we get from the front end. And when we process it, we return it in the same shape. All right. What else we have here is utils. And I changed the name of the functions to file instead of image because you're not going to always to work with images. But instead we're going to work with files. And then we have decode because I found that in Windows, um, it doesn't work if I don't have the code. Um, so that's basically for the back end. We are defining here the solutions that we have. It's inside the init file. Okay. So the init file will automatically grab all the files in this folder. And this file should have always a process function, as I discussed. So process function takes input receive data as a dictionary and returns a dictionary in the same format. Um, it's here and there. So this one making super resolution, this one making it gray. Okay. 
Um, that's not a real example of super resolution. That's just OpenCV doubling the size. So just in case if someone is asking. Um, yeah, so that's for the back end. I, and I already put this four zeros so I can host it on my network. Okay, so that's for the back end. I can just run it by going to the terminal here. Let's clear this one up, cd back end. And we are going to say Python 3 main.py. That's all. Okay, so now our back end is running. I will jump to my front end. I will show you what I'm doing here. So that's my laptop. I'm going to do exactly the same. If you don't have Gitrip installed, you can just download the zip file and extract it. So I'm going to grab it once more here. As you can see, it's already slow. So git clone and then the link. All right, so we have it here. Again, you have to install the dependencies by writing down pip uh, install dash r dash requirements to text. And here's our front end. It looks also different. That's mainly the framework. Um, let me explain each folder here we have configs. These are actually the configuration of um, the framework. So let me explain it to you. We have, for example, uh, the grayscale. So it has a name of what is the solution is and the URL of the back end that we're going to use. So I'm going to change it to my um, workstation here. So it's like this, all right. Is it 31 or 32? We will find that, okay. And I'm saving it. So I have a plugin for uh, the GUI and the banner. That's just like a presentation, a, a JPEG. And for style transfer, I can also do the same, but I don't have style transfer solution right now. I only have grayscale and super resolution and polls are just running off in CV for the main time, just to show it. So we have it 2131, save it. Okay. And this IP address is actually the back end side, which I have on my workstation here. And DCC, this is going to be changed in the future. I am still have to work on this. Um, these are like the implementation for the 3D software. So for Max, Maya, and Nuke. I just figured out that all the softwares now are using PySci 2 uh, and I'm still uh, using PyQt5. So um, these are just the integration. The main GUI still remain the same. Like app.py is still the same. DCC will just have like the bridge that can make it to work inside the 3D software. All right, uh, so it's going to, I'm going to work on it, still not now. Output, here is the output data from the processing. So for example, if you make an image in super resolution or you change it to grayscale, whatever kind of AI thing you're doing, the output will always be saved here as a session. So you'll always have like a timestamp of the date of the process or where you sent, when you send this uh, request and then you will have a folder for it. And then we have plugins, okay, just Real quick, data includes the banner for um, these solutions. That's what was in the configuration file. And here how it looks like for the plugin. This is the main thing for the framework. So it's a class, it's a widget class from Qt, and it should be renamed as register. This could be changed in the future. I'm sure I have to change it because it looks so uh, ugly as a naming. And it should have a request body and receive data handler. Okay, so request body, um, what we're doing in this blogging that we are building a user friendly UI where he can just pick the image or put some values of like style transfer or and so on. And uh, here is going to build the final comment that I'm going to submit to the back end. And receive data handler is going to be when we get a response from the back end, we want to save it but uh, we are going to make the plugin is responsible to save it because it's not going to be the same all the time. So that's for the plugin. And what else do we have here? UI, um, these are just custom widgets. And then we have settings. You can define some settings here, but for now I only have the auto load, which will automatically load this configuration for me on the startup. But I can get rid of one of them so I can show you how to use this. All right, so now we are ready to go. We can just open the command line here and we are going to do 
Python and then app.py. So here's our UI. Again, when we are having the DCC implementation, we can literally load this uh, UI inside Maya, Max, Houdini, Blender, Nuke, whatever. So I have grayscale solution here, I can switch that. And then I see just banner and the load image. Or I can switch to super resolution. Or I can import a new configuration and I can load it from my configs and then style transfer. Okay, then I can right click, switch, and that's how it looks like. So now we can see what I mean by making it user friendly. So the user will just load the source image, load the style image. That's a widget. This widget can be exchanged with whatever thing you want to do. All right, and on the right side, here is the output of the session. So what I'm going to do, let's play with a switch, uh, with a grayscale, and we load an image. I have my cat photo. Okay, and I'm going to submit. Okay, that's cool. So here we got an error because we couldn't reach the back end because my IP address has uh, a 132, not just 131. So I'm going again to configs and for the grayscale and the super resolution, I can just drag and drop them here and it's 132 and the same for this one. All right, and we can just restart again python app.py and we're good to go switch load image and then we have in my folder here I have the cat photo and then I submit Zack. so you can see now on my back end I got a request and it's 200 so it succeeded and you can see also here at the bottom here request succeeded response object will be saved in the output directory and here is the output so you can double click and then you can see the result okay so we just made it in grayscale same for example like with a super resolution I can switch to it load image I can get the same cat photo submit and I got the result instantly and here it is all right so we also have here like you can see the URL of the back end where is we are where we are going to address um, the post request. So in the future, if you're going to use Amazon Web Services or any cloud services and we have a Ubuntu installed in it and we just host it our back end to it, we can just change this URL to point to the online server and we are getting exactly the same result. Okay? So it's totally dynamic to change. It's so modular you can change everything inside it and you can create your own configuration. So I will keep developing on this so we can have like a editor for creating new configuration or changing uh, machine learning solutions. Yeah, so uh, it's been a long time. <laughs> I just did this one in the weekend. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for the next videos. I will just be doing some um, customizing, adding more features and it's all going to be on my GitHub repository where you can find it here. I keep it in the description. So yeah, that was it. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and see you next time. Bye bye. Here comes the music. Boom 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 boom. I'll shoot you right down. Boom 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 boom.